All right, if you're drawn to maths, if you like maths, you probably like patterns and things like that. Powers of I, I just really enjoy this because it just comes out really nice. Uh, let's take a look. So don't forget, I is equal to the square root of negative 1. No, that's how we, that's just where we need to get started, first of all. Um, all right, let's look at I to the power of 1. Well, I to the power of 1 is just I. So I to the power of 1, pretty straightforward. It's I. I know that seems strange. I'm saying I to the power of 1 is the same as that, which is the same as that. So I to the power of 1 is I. Okay. I to the power of 2. And this is where things get a little bit interesting. So if I square it, I'm saying the square root of negative 1, which is two weird, like non-existent things that when multiplied together make negative 1, times the square root of negative 1. So this is a number that when multiplied by itself makes negative 1. This is a number that when multiplied by itself makes negative 1. So if I take two numbers that when multiplied by themselves uh, make negative 1, the answer is negative 1. Um, if you're not excited about this, then you're missing something really exciting. I is an imaginary number. I squared is a real number. It's going to, that, that's cool. Now, you might want to pause it and think for a moment about what I cubed is. Pause it or not. All right. So, I cubed, what happens here? Well, I cubed is the same as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Now, we've already ascertained that the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 is negative 1. And then I'm just going to multiply it by our last square root of negative 1. Now, to simplify this a little bit, that's negative the square root of negative 1, which is the square root of negative 1 is i. Negative i. All right, so to just make that really clear, i to the power of 3 is negative i. So I'm back to imaginary. So i to the 1, imaginary. i to the 2, real. i to the 3, imaginary. What about i to the 4? Okay, so you might want to think and stop and pause and think about what i to the 4 is. Well, i to the 4, I can show you a bunch of weird stuff to do this, but i to the 4 is the same as i squared times i squared. Well, what's i squared? i squared is negative 1. i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So, that is a real number. Let's put that in a table. It's not quite a table, but you get the idea. i to the 1 equals i. i squared equals negative 1. i to the 3 equals negative i. And i to the 4 equals 1. What about i to the 5? Alright, i to the 5. That's going to be equal to i to the 4 times i, times i to the 1. Well, we know what i to the 4 is. That's 1. We know what i is. It's just i. So now I have 1i, which is just i. So adding to my table, i to the 5 equals i. Now, i to the 6, really quickly, is the same as i to the 5 times i i to the 5 is that thing there, times i, what do I get here? You should see the working, it's actually here. That's i, that's i. So i times i are two numbers, da, 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 negative 1. i to the 6 equals negative 1. All right, now, if you are spotting this, this is corresponding with that. This is corresponding with that. Or, sorry, that's corresponding with that. That's corresponding with that. We're starting to get a bit of a pattern forming every fourth term. So, i to the 7 
is going to correspond with i to the 3, negative i. i to the 8 is going to correspond with this, which is 1. i, negative 1, negative i, 1. i, negative 1, negative i, 1. Those are powers of i. Let's go real wild. What about i to the 33? Well, I could write out my whole pattern, but I, I think I can go a bit easier than that. Notice that this is, it's a pattern of four. It repeats every four. Repeats every four. And on the fourth ones, we get just a nice, easy, the number one. So, I'm going to break this up. I can break it up however I want, but I'm going to break it up into uh, a multiple of four. In this case, I to the 32 times i to the 1. Now, I can ignore i to the 32 because i to the 32 is just a multiple of 4, so it's actually just going to be the number 1. And then all I need to consider is this part here, i to the 1. Well, i to the 1 is just i. 1 times i is i. And just to drive home the point, i to the 75. All right, i to the 75. I can break that up because I know that uh, 72 is a multiple of 4. So I can say i to the 72 times, now what's left over? i to the 3. Well, i to the 72 is just 1, because anything with a multiple of 4 is going to be 1. And i to the 3 is negative i. So 1 times negative i is negative i. All right, that's some magic. There's some pretty cool things that happen here. Um, one, there's this nice little pattern that forms, and we can do some really, really large powers of i. Uh, got this nice little cycle going on. But interestingly, I think probably the most interesting part is that these imaginary numbers cycle between being imaginary and real, imaginary and real, depending on whether you have an uh, even power or an odd power. Odd powers, imaginary. Even powers, real. Powers of i.